Hello there and welcome to this webinar. Basically in this webinar we want to give you the skills, knowledge, structure and capabilities to be able to complete assessment task 2.1 2.2 and 2.3 from your assessment cluster that you are doing as part of your TAE. Now this webinar it's going to go through a lot of the steps that you're going to need to understand in order to be able to put together your assessments. Now if you come along to the face-to-face -face class the trainer actually may walk you through these steps. If you, come, if you have enrolled in a distance course, uh, you may be able to watch this webinar and um, completely understand it yourself. And either is totally fine, but this webinar will also uh, form a bit of a reference tool because in the actual assessment cluster, you're going to be dealing with three units of competency. And so the process that we're going to go through now for this unit of competency that we're going to work with, um, you'll basically be replicating across the three units. Okay, So I highly encourage you to watch this webinar, take massive amounts of notes, and take as much information away as you can. Also re-watch it. All right, stop, rewind, uh, make sure that you're understanding the steps that we're going through as we're putting together these assessments. Now, assessment creation, um, it's never, ever, ever, ever going to be perfect and there's never one single way to do it. There are multiple ways that you can put together assessments. And what I'm gonna share with you now is just one process that you can go through in order to create assessments, okay? But assessment design uh, is an art form in itself and we're not expecting you to get it perfect, but we are expecting you to come up with good quality um, assessment instruments that could be used in real life if necessary, okay? So, hopefully you have also watched the other webinars that have been created on assessment creation because there's a number of um, assessment webinars uh, that, or instructional design webinars that we have put out on uh, YouTube that um, you can certainly check out and that'll give you a foundational understanding of what we're actually going to go through right now. So this is really exciting. So as part of your TA in the assessment cluster, you will come across um, this section, case study scenario for assessment task two. Now, we are dealing with a bit of a simulated scenario here. We've got a company called Coffee Holics, and basically they have wanted us to put together some assessments and training uh, for some individuals that work at their company. So we have um, a simulated company that we are going to imagine that you work for called Able Training Services. All right, it's written there. Okay, cool. So just be aware of that. Now the three units that we're gonna work with are these here. Work effectively with others, provide customer information and assistance, participate in safe work practices. Now the third one here, this is gonna be done via an RPL type situation. Um, these first two will be done uh, just normally as normal assessments. Okay, so let's get into it. So just remember, we are making assessments. Uh, at these levels, so AQF level two, level one, and uh, we are going to put together some assessments and I'll map out the entire process for you just here for a moment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an assessment plan, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through every single one of these steps and give you examples. So by the end of the webinar, you'll know exactly what you need to do. Okay, and I'll show you how to do um, creating assessment questions and all of that, right? But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make an assessment plan. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna map how we're going to, um, we're gonna create the assessments or what assessments we're gonna use to assess the unit, okay? Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create the assessments. So we're gonna create an observation checklist and uh, a bit of a verbal interview type um, assessment, okay? And uh, we're going to do that um, for the first unit. And then after that, you are then going to trial that with a colleague or trial that with a classmate or trial that with someone, okay? And we're gonna trial it. And we're gonna see what happens and see if the questions work or don't work, okay? During the trial, we're gonna notice what doesn't work. And then after that, we're gonna type up 
the assessments and we're going to make final copies of them, okay? And then we're going to use those final copies with five individuals, okay? So let's go through the first stages, okay? So let's check it out. So the scenarios are the following. Okay, so we got Julie Smithers, and she'll be using the unit, uh, or we're going to be creating the assessment BSB WOR 203, work effectively with others. We're going to base our assessments on this unit, and Julie Smithers is going to be the, f the person that finally is going to be the candidate that was going to um, be working with this assessment. Okay, and so these people are from Coffee Holics. Okay, then we've got Christian Gray. And he is the other candidate who works at the company and who's going to be needing these assessments. Okay? So you can read a little bit about Julie and Christian. And the third scenario that we've got here is participate in safe work practices. And this is going to be an RPL um, type activity. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about how that would differ um, to the other two yeah, as we go through it. Okay? So... Let's head to the first scenario. So we've got Julie, okay, so she's going to be the eventual person that um, uses um, the assessment that we're going to create, okay? So Julie Smithers, age 18, first job, limited computer literacy, LLM concerns. Julie is an underperforming staff member at your workplace or at Coffeeholics, okay? Um, she has been with your organisation for three months and you need to do an assessment on her as part of her probation period. Okay, so this is all part of copy holics. Okay, so we're coming down. So let's get into it. All right, so purpose and aims of assessment and overall rationale. So we could say that the purpose of the assessment, and you can literally write this in if you want or change the wording, totally fine if you do, but I'm going to just give you overall guidance and then you can put it into your own words. Okay, so the purpose and aims of assessment. Um, is to um, assess Julie's capability to effectively work with others um, after her probation period at the coffee shop. Okay, so I'll say it again. Um, the purpose is to assess Julie's ability to effectively work with others at the coffee shop and deliver effective um, service and support to others. Okay, so hopefully you caught that. Okay, now next one is date assessment due. Well, you can pick any dates in the week that you're filling this out. That's totally fine. Um, it's a mock scenario, so you can just um, make that date up. Or you could do the date that you're filling this out, totally fine, okay? Benchmark competency standard is basically the unit name. So that's gonna be BSB WOR 203, work effectively with others, okay? Now, Coming down, we have the next one, which is assessment context or place training will occur. So you can put coffee holics for this. You can put coffee holics. Okay. And coming down, um, now we've got the assessment condition uh, requirements. And these are taken from the unit um, of competency. And this is taken from the assessment conditions section. Now, I've already put this in here for you, but I want you to understand where I got this from. Okay, so I got this from the unit of competency. So just have a read of that. Now, basically, I copied and pasted that from the unit, scrolling down from the unit here. Okay, so we've got assessment conditions are right here. So basically, what I did is I just copied and pasted that wording there and I took it up to the top. Okay, in your hard copy of your assessment, uh, you'll be able to see um, the unit of competency um, and you'll be able to copy and paste it in there. That's fine. Okay, so assessment conditions, that's it. Okay, target group to be assessed. Well, in here you can put Julie Smithers. Um, and uh, I think she was 18 years old. Uh, let's go up and let's double check what we have got for Julie. Okay, so 18 years old, first job, limited computer literacy, LN concerns, um, underperforming staff member, um, and uh, maybe we want to make up some other details about her, um, and maybe we could say that she's a little bit unmotivated, whatever it might be. All right, so I've just taken this information here, and I'm going to put it in my own words um, where it says target group to be assessed. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to come down. Organisational arrangements for conducting assessment. 
Well, this is going to be a case of, well, what does Coffeeholics need to organise for these assessments to take place? So you might say, um, time available for Julie to undertake um, the practical aspects of the assessment. You might say, time needed for, uh, for Julie to, con, uh, to undertake written test or verbal interview. Um, you might put um, appropriate equipment needs to be available. Uh, you might put real world situations and um, customer interaction will be required. You might also put um, qualified assessor needs to visit location uh, and this will happen on X date at X period of time, okay? So these are all the things that would have to be available and uh, the process that the company itself, Coffeeholics, uh, needs to go through in order to make it happen, okay? So privacy and confidentiality, in here we would put that um, candidates' results and candidates' evidence are all private and kept confidential, okay? So based on the training package and workplace information, provided what contextualization needs opportunities are available. So in here you could say um, uh, all assessments will be based on uh, Coffeeholics examples um, and uh, policies, procedures, and Coffeeholics equipment, okay? Cool. Reasonable adjustment provision for specialist support. Well, we know based on what we've read up the top that Julie does have LLM challenges. So in here we might put um, four candidates that have LLM challenges. Um, they will be allowed to do uh, verbal interviews instead of written tests. Okay, so that's one way you could put it. Okay, coming down, we've got identified WHS hazards, including assess risks and control strategies. So in here you could put um, coffee shop area um, to be inspected for any hazards um, and you could even put um, appropriate um, cleaning to be done in, um, in alignment with uh, government regulations, okay? Now, assessment methods in here, well, um, for this situation, we're going to go observation, okay, so observation. Um, Excuse the fact that it's in red, it shouldn't be red, it's just um, the way this turned out, okay? So, um, let me put that in black for us. Okay, so observation, okay? Now, in assessment instruments, we're gonna write, oops, it's in red again, observation checklist, okay? Assess a guide, and maybe we're gonna put, um, um, student copy of uh, observation tasks to be completed. Okay, cool. So let me pop that in black for us. Okay, cool. Now, evidence and rationale. In here, we could say that observation will be the best method of assessment in order to um, observe. Uh, Julie um, interacting with customers. Okay, so you can put that in. Now, next one, uh, we've got verbal, let me change that to black writing again. So we've got verbal interview, and then in here we could put interview questions, um, we could put, um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all we need. I'm going to put um, benchmark answers. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. Then in evidence and rationale, we could say uh, that verbal interview will be the best way to ascertain um, Julie's knowledge um, in relation to uh, working effectively with others. Okay. So I'm just going to delete that. Okay. If you didn't have a chance to write it down, just make sure that you go back and uh, type it, uh, rewind and type it or write it down. Okay, so materials required. In here, we could put coffee shop equipment, uh, we could put FPOS, we could put um, PPE, uh, we could put pen, paper, uh, we could put unit of competency, benchmark answers. 
Uh, we could put um, food, coffee beans, okay? Uh, we could put um, safety equipment, we could put um, cleaning materials, all the things that we're gonna need in order to be able to assess or to conduct the assessment, okay? Another one you could add in is a recording device um, in order to record Julie's answers in the verbal QA. okay? So assess the name, you could put your first name and last name. Okay, so scrolling down, administration process for assessments. So this could be that um, the that Julie Smithers is enrolled in the unit of competency with the RTO. I'll say it again. Julie Smithers is enrolled for the unit of competency with the RTO. Um, she uh, makes a, t um, a time is organized for the assessor to go out and observe uh, Julie and to conduct the verbal interview. And uh, we could also say uh, assessments are submitted to uh, the assessor. Assessor is to upload the completed assessments to the uh, to the server and a uh, certificate is to be issued uh, to Coffeeholics, okay? Um, and somewhere in here, someone will need to pay some money as well, all right? So um, basically the question's asking you, what would be the admin process for the assessments, all right? So um, how is she gonna enroll? Um, and when are the assessments gonna take place? How long will they take place for? Um, is there any paperwork that needs to be included? Anything like that. You might even put in here an LLN assessment needs to be completed as well. All right. Plan review and approval process. In here, you could say the um, assessment plan will be reviewed by the manager of Coffeeholics and the RTO manager. Okay. So a, I think it's Able Training Services. Storage and retrieval process. You could say that um, all assessment evidence gathered will be kept on um, the student management system, okay? Version control to be applied, you could put in 1.1, okay? That's totally fine. Manager approval, you could um, get a classmate or someone that you know to sign it and put the date, okay? So scrolling down, let's get into the actual unit of, of competency and the next stage, which is mapping. Okay, it's called mapping. What we're about to do is um, not too much of a complex process, but we just need to go through it step by step, okay? So what we're going to do, first of all, is what I suggest that you do is read through each of the criteria, okay? Just read through these, this section, okay? And if you haven't seen a unit of competency before, um, <laughs> go and check out training.gov.au and uh, look at a few different units of competency or otherwise check out some of our webinars on instructional design, on the design cluster on navigating training.gov.au, all right? So that's just fundamental knowledge. And I won't go through it at the moment, but um, just remember that this is a unit of competency. It's made up of things called elements and performance, cri uh, this is performance criteria here. So PC stands for performance criteria. And then we've got performance evidence and knowledge evidence and assessment conditions, okay? Now, when you look at your book, you will not have the X's here. Okay, so what I want you to do is just read through the criteria, okay? And you'll be able to do that in the hard copy that you've got in front of you right now, okay? All right, so first thing we're gonna do is read through the criteria. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're gonna look at each of these items and we're going to make a decision on the best way that we think would be to assess each of these items. Okay, now we can choose from observation or verbal Q&A. Observation or verbal Q&A. No other choices, these are the only choices we're gonna give you, okay? We can give you more, but it would confuse you and it's just a little bit too much, okay? So you're gonna get two ways to, uh, to assess and you've gotta make a choice now. Now what you see on the screen right now is here is something I've made for you already. Okay, I think on the cooking shows, they say, here's one I made earlier, okay? So what I've done for you is I've gone ahead and made some decisions. Now, what you put, as in X's, is totally up to you, okay? It really is. I'm just giving you an example here, okay? So I don't wanna see everybody submitting a book that looks exactly like this, all right? It shouldn't, okay? But 
all I've done is I've just made some examples for you, okay? So what we're doing is we're reading the criteria. Identify own relationships and duties in relation to work group members and undertake activities in a manner that promotes cooperation and good relationships, okay? So for me, I've made a decision. I've made a what? A decision that observation would be the best way to assess this, okay? Now you could choose verbal Q&A as well, that's totally fine. Or you could just choose verbal Q&A. It doesn't matter. You just need to choose one or the other. And what you are going to do is you are going to read through it and think, huh, is this something I could watch someone do? Or All right, so up till now, we have looked at, um, up till now, we have looked at the um, performance criteria here, and we've made some decisions on how we are going to assess each item. So via observation or verbal Q&A. Okay, and we put an X in the section. So if it is something that we can observe, we are going to put an X in the observation. If it's a question, then we are going to put an X in the question verbal Q&A, okay? Now, for example, provide support to team members to ensure work group goals are met. That is something we could probably watch, so we're gonna to choose to do it via observation. Okay, so now, scrolling down. All right, so next section we're gonna look at is the performance evidence, okay? so. First thing that you need to realize though is that your book is not gonna look exactly like this, okay? So what I've done for you on the screen is I've actually labeled it, okay? So performance evidence, I've actually typed in the numbering for you. So what we need to do is put in PE1, PE2, PE3, PE4, PE5, and that's actually going to give us a numbering system. Then what we do is the KEs, we're gonna number them. So KE1, KE2, KE3. Um, and that'll give us a numbering system to work with, okay? Now I'm gonna give you a strong hint. Performance evidence is generally something that we would observe, all right? So generally you're gonna find the majority of performance evidence, we would always observe it, okay? Now, 
There may be some times where we also um, do uh, verbal Q&A as well. All right, so as you're going through these, you could certainly do an X here, um, and you know you could go through and put an X here, there, and everywhere. Um, but basically, my big hint to you is that majority of performance evidence is going to be observation. Okay, because this is what we need to see someone do in order to know that they are um, competent in the units. Uh, in terms of demonstrating to us the skills, okay? Now, the knowledge evidence, okay, the majority of the knowledge evidence, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, is probably gonna be verbal Q&A, okay? That's just the way it generally works out, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to, after we've decided how we're gonna assess it, okay, so PC 1.1, we've decided we're gonna assess it by our observation. All right, we've gone through and we put an X next to how we have decided would be the best way to do it, okay? Scrolling down, we've done that for the performance evidence, okay? Done that for the knowledge evidence. Now, assessment conditions, you need to do that as well, okay? So, now we've just finished the mapping, okay? We've finished what's called the mapping. Okay, so now we're gonna come down and we're gonna to start to look creating the assessments themselves. Okay, now, so let's take a look at it and, okay, so the unit code and title here, just like we've been working with, it's going to be BSB WOR 203, work effectively with others, okay, so you can type that in or write that in, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So again, um, excuse the red writing, but let me change that to black again. Okay, so instructions to assessor. In here we could say, um, make appropriate time to meet Julie to observe her for her observation. Um, mark the observation checklist as she is, um, effect she is working effectively with her team members um, and serving customers at the coffee shop. Also make a time with Julie to um, conduct the verbal interview, uh, write down her answers, record her answers, provide her feedback, and upload the assessment to the, um, um, to the ABLE um, training services um, uh, um, cloud server, okay, or um, student management system. Instructions to candidates. In here, we could put in um, a range of time with your assessor to complete the practical task um, and be observed in your workplace at Coffeeholics. Um, allow three hours for this. Instructions to candidate could also be um, allow a time to um, conduct the verbal interview or answer verbal interview questions around the topic of working effectively with others. Okay. So scrolling down. Okay. Now. Um, assessment methods. In here we can put in observation and verbal interview. Okay. Assessment conditions. Um, this is what we put in before just up the top there. So I think, um, let's grab it just for the sake of it. Uh, yes, assessment conditions are just down here. Okay. So we can copy and copy and paste that down here. All right, I won't do it, but we will put that information here, okay? Oh, actually, no, I'll do it, just so that you know. All right, cool. So we can copy and paste that in there. Okay. So now, reasonable adjustment. In here, we could say, as the candidate has LN challenges, um, a verbal interview is being used. Okay, appeals policy. If the candidate does not agree with, their with the assessor's decision, um, they will be able to appeal the decision, okay, um, via a, uh, a written request to the academic manager, okay. WHS, you could say the, the assessment area will be inspected for any hazards and candidate wear, will wear appropriate PPE, such as apron, such as um, gloves when serving food, okay. Submitting your assessment. Um, candidate will be required to complete all assessment paperwork and then hand it directly to their assessor. Okay, timeline for completion. You could say uh, 
or let's say ob observation and written task to be, um, let's say, let's, um, observation, let's say three or four hours, verbal interview allow, um, allow one hour, and all tasks must be completed within a week. Okay, recommended reading, you could say policy handbook um, and uh, yeah, WHS manual. Okay, resources required, you could say um, coffee shop equipment, um, food, uh, coffee beans, things like that. All right. And you would also say benchmark answers, you would say um, assess a guide, um, enrollment form, um, all of those things, okay. Evidence requirements, you could say completed observation checklist, and you could say um, uh, what else, um, completed verbal interview checklist or verbal interview report. Okay. To be deemed competent, you could say um, all practical tasks must be done to a sufficient manner and satisfactory manner. And you could say all verbal interview questions must be answered satisfactory. Okay. Feedback, you could say um, candidate will be given verbal feedback after each of their assessments. And you could say um, candidate will have an opportunity to provide feedback to their assessor um, on how they were assessed after the assessment is over. Okay. You can leave this section blank. Okay. Now, um, let's see. Observation checklist. All right. So just ignore this top part. Oh, actually, no. I'll pop it in for now. So RTO is going to be um, Success Training Academy, or you can put um, the uh, hypothetical company that we've got there, which is. Uh, let me just double check what that was. It was Able Training Services. Okay. Candidate name is going to be Jim uh, Julie Smithers, and then the um, person that you put in here, it's going to be the name of a person in your class, or it's the name of a person that you know personally, um, or whoever it might be. All right, but um, we'll come back to that or later. All right, so just you may want to just leave that blank for now. Okay, now assess the name is going to be your first name and last name. All right, competency standard is this. Okay, assessment date is whatever date you want to pick. Okay, task procedures being observed. Um, you can put working effectively in the coffee shop, um, serving customers and um, helping other colleagues um, in the coffee shop. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start making the assessment. Okay, and I've already made a couple of examples here for you. Okay, so what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to find the mapping, okay? So we're going to go up here, and we're going to find the first item that we decided we would observe. Okay, so what was the first item? It was 1.1. So the first item that we're going to create an observation item on is 1.1. Okay, so it says identify own responsibilities and duties in relationship to, in relation to work group members and undertake activities in a manner that promotes cooperation and good relationships. Okay, promotes cooperation and good relationships. Okay, observation 1.1. All right, so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create an observation statement that's going to test um, cooperating with others. Okay, in a manner that, um, working in a manner that shows cooperation with others. All right, so what I've come up with is, while working, the candidate offers help to other colleagues when shop is busy. Okay, then I put in some benchmark uh, performance that the assessor must see. Assessor must see the candidate offer help at least three times. Okay. All right, hopefully that one's made sense. Now let's go to the next one, all right? Well, what's the next item that we have marked up the top as observation? Okay, let's go up to the top. Let's go up to the top. All right, the next item is 1.2. Take time and resource constraints into account in fulfilling work requirements of self and others. So when we're creating an observation checklist, the easiest way to create observation statements is to make them time dependent things. So for example, when serving customers, or when starting shift, or while working, 
or when um, speaking to their boss, they do X, Y, Z. Okay, so take time and resource constraints into account in fulfilling work requirements of self and others. So in this one, huh, okay, 1.2, observation. So I'm gonna grab the mapping, first of all, 1.2, observation. So I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna put 1.2 in the mapping, then I'm gonna make a statement. And my statement is gonna be something that tests that they can take time and resource constraints into consideration, okay? So while serving coffee, they serve the coffee within 15 minutes of the order, okay? Because that relates to time and resource constraints, okay? So then I'll put the benchmark performance must be, assessor must see the candidate make the coffee within 15 minutes, okay? Now, next one, 2.1, okay? So I've started, um, I've found the mapping and then I've, started with while working. So let's go up and check what 2.1 is. Okay, now I just know for a fact that the next one's 2.1. Hopefully it is. Okay, cool. So provide support to team members to ensure work group goals are met. Okay, so I'll say it again. Provide support to team members to ensure work group goals are met. Okay, so remember we're just doing the observation. Okay, so for now, Okay, provide support team members to ensure work group goals are met. Okay, so coming down, provide support to uh, work group members to make sure goals are met. Okay, so this one, huh? Okay, let me think about this one. Provide support to colleagues to make sure work group goals are met. Okay, so it could be um, while working, um, candidate notices that um, shop needs cleaning and um, initiates um, cleaning at least once, okay? And then benchmark answer could be a benchmark performance. Um, candidate cleans up, excuse the spelling, at least three tables, okay? Okay, hopefully what I've done there has made sense, okay? Let me just um, clear, okay, cool. So now let's go to the next one, all right? Well, what's the next observation item that we have got to observe? So uh, let's go up to the top again. Hopefully this is starting to make sense, okay? So, okay, so we got two point. Two point two, construct, uh, contribute constructively to work group goals and tasks according to organisational requ um, requirements. Contribute constructively, okay? So, 2.2, all right, let's do it. So we go down here, and we are going to put, okay, we're gonna put 2.2, okay? And in here we're gonna put, while working, they do X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, okay? Um, and that is going to be good to go, all right? So what you're going to do um, is, for each of the items that you have put an X next uh, for observation, you are going to make an observation statement, okay? So you're gonna put an observation statement for this one, this one, this one, okay, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, okay? And in total, you need, let's check it out, you need, 10 statements, okay? So while working candidate does X, Y, Z, all right? Then you need to put in the benchmark performance, okay? So we put the mapping, we put the statement, okay? Now, what you can also do is group things together. So you may find that, for example, um, PC, excuse me, um, 2.1 also goes with PE2, okay? Those could go together as well, okay? Now, you have to make sure that you do 10 statements, okay, let me just, um, so you do 10 statements and you have to make sure that you cover off everything that you have put as observation. Hopefully this is starting to make sense. Um, you have to put everything that you've got as observation um, 
you have to make sure that you've got it covered in the assessments, okay? So that is the observation checklist and how we make it, okay? So now we're going to move on to a next assessment, which is the verbal Q&A, okay? Now what we're going to do is make a verbal Q&A so what we're going to do is make a verbal Q&A for, um, for the other items. So for example, let's go up and let's do exactly the same process, okay? So I always like to work with the mapping first, okay? So we're gonna go up here. Okay, so the first item that we have put an X against um, as verbal Q&A is encourage, acknowledge, and act on constructive feedback provided by others in the work group, okay? So, We've put an X against that one. So we're gonna go 1.3. Okay, so 1.3, we're gonna come down here. Okay, so yes, I know there's a lot of scrolling, but um, we'll get used to it. Okay, so in here, we're gonna put in 1.3. And now we're gonna make a verbal interview question based on that criteria. So it could be a question such as, so it was acknowledge, um, so encourage and acknowledge and act on feedback from others. So it could be a question such as, tell me the last piece of feedback that your manager gave you and what did you do differently? Okay. Another question could be, um, what's the last piece of feedback that a customer gave you? Okay. And what did you do about it? Okay, so um, tell me the last piece of feedback, blah, blah. Okay, and we're gonna put in the question. In here, we're gonna put in the answer as to what we would expect. So uh, we could put in um, answer must include uh, feedback such as and um, new action taken. Cool, all right. Now, so that's 1.3 done, okay? Um, and now let's come back up here and let's check out what was the next item that we are verbal Q&Aing. Okay, not really a word, but I just made up a new word. Okay, so the next one that we've got verbal Q&A is provide support to team members to ensure work group goals are met. Okay, so that one is 2.1. So 2.1, provide support to team members. All right, 2.1, we're gonna come down here. 2.1. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. So 2.1, we're gonna put the mapping in. Then we're gonna make a question about 2.1. So a question could be something like, tell me three ways that you provide support to your colleagues, okay? And then um, you could say answer must include, um, Mm. Offering to uh, make coffee, clean the machine, um, sweep, sweep, sweep the floor, whatever it might be. Okay, so you can make up whatever answer that you want to make up for your question. Okay, so then, all right, we go ahead and find our next item that we have uh, put across against for uh, verbal Q and A. Okay, do to do, do, go up the top here, two point one. Okay, now I'm not gonna do all of them for you, but what I will do is give you some more verbal Q&A example questions that you could do, okay? So, um, now let's see, 2.1, done. All right, so 2.2, contribute constructively to work group goals and tasks according to organizational requirements. So you could say, tell me three ways that you, um, oh, well, that you help your, help the shop achieve its goals. Okay, another one could be, what are two of the, co uh, the coffee shop goals? Okay, um, share information, relevant work and with work group to ensure designated goals are met. It could be, what information do you share with your colleagues on a regular basis? Okay, identifying plan strategies. Okay, so it could be, tell me an example of when you um, improve something in the coffee shop. Or, if there was one way to improve something in the coffee shop, what would it be? Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and make questions for the verbal Q&A ones. Now in um, coming down, um, 
If you put an X against any of these for the performance evidence, obviously you'd make a question for those as well. So um, let's say we got using cultural appropriate communication skills. So we could say, um, how would you make sure that you speak in a culturally appropriate manner? Um, or it could be, how would you make sure that you don't offend somebody from another culture? Okay. So many different questions that we could use um, to test these different criteria. Okay. Now there's no right or wrong, it's just is the question understandable and does it actually cover the criteria that we've got here. Now, knowledge evidence, um, for example, it says outline the organization's standards, policies and procedures. So it could be, um, tell me two of the standards that relate to your job. Or what is one of the policies that relates to your job? Or what is one of the policies that relates to um, bully, uh, bullying and harassment? Okay. Or what is the procedure you would follow if you um, felt like you were being bullied at work? Okay. So you want to go ahead and in total, how many questions are we making? How many um, verbal Q&As are we doing? Let's come down. And we are doing 13 verbal Q&As, all right? So we put the mapping in and then we ask the question and we put in what the benchmark answer is. Okay, so put the mapping in, make your question, put the answer. Now, it doesn't really matter what the answer is, it's more so um, you can make that up. We're not expecting you to understand what it's like to work at a coffee shop. We just need to pick a generic scenario um, that you could relate to, okay? So coming down, okay, now what you are going to do is do an analysis of the unit, uh, sorry, of the assessments. So you are actually going to sit down with a um, colleague, a friend, um, a classmate, and you're going to trial the assessment, okay? And you can read through this, okay, um, and these instructions. But what you're going to do is you are going to come up here, and once you have made the observation and the verbal Q&A, you're actually going to use it with a friend, colleague, or classmate, okay? And what you're going to do is you're gonna test it to see if it works, okay? So you're gonna go through the observation checklist. You're gonna tick satisfactory for each of the items. And you're gonna provide some feedback such as, good job, well done. Okay, um, great work. Okay, served coffee well. Okay, and you're going to put in some feedback throughout. Okay, now not all of the items have to have feedback, but um, you need to go through and tick satisfactory for each item. Okay, then you're going to go through and sit with your colleague your candidate, your coworker, and ask them the questions, okay? Because you're gonna find that, uh, piece of feedback, okay? You're going to find that some of the questions land well, some of the questions don't work at all. So you're gonna go through and ask the questions that you've got and write down the candidate's answer, okay? And what we're doing is a trial of the assessment. And as you're going through and asking the questions, you definitely mark them satisfactory or not satisfactory, okay? So you go through, you trial it, ask the question, write down what they say. Ask the question, write down what they say. Ask the question, write down what they say. Um, yeah, ask the question, write down what they say. You're gonna go through and do that. Okay, at the end, you're gonna put their score, put satisfactory, not your satisfactory, give some feedback, and sign it as the assessor, and get them to sign it as the candidate, okay? Now, as you've gone through it, you would have noticed if it worked well, if it didn't, okay? Now, um, what you're going to do is you are going to then, so unit of competency is BSB, WOR, 203, work effectively with others, all right? Now, tool instruments being analysed, you can say observation checklist and verbal interview. 
tool instrument designed by, um, you'll put your first name and last name, okay? Analysis conducted by. So this would be the person that's conducting the analysis. So this would be your colleague, your friend, um, or whoever it might be that's just um, done the assessment with you up there, okay? Now, date of analysis, that's the date you're doing this, okay? Now, you're going to go through um, your, friend, colleague, classmate is going to go through and analyze the assessment for you. And they're going to put yes or no, and they are going to put in a comment. So can the purpose of the assessment be easily identified? Well, it's either a yes or a no. And I'm going to give you a strong hint to put yes and say um, it is mentioned in the assessment plan. Okay, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, that's probably a good way to start it, okay? Is there a place to identify the candidate or target learner group? So yes, no, put in a comment, okay? And this is done by the person that you've just done the trial with, okay? So hopefully that's made sense. Does the tool instrument provide assess adjustment for or able to be adjusted for special needs? Okay, yes, no, all right, comment. Um, does the assessment tool instrument meet the relevant organizational WHS requirements um, as per venue and task? Yes, no, put in a comment, okay? And obviously when your person is reviewing it, they're gonna review the assessment plan, they're gonna review um, each of the aspects, okay? So they're gonna go through and say yes or no, and they're gonna put in a comment, okay? Um, oh, let's see, coming down. Okay, does the tool provide for an appeals policy and procedure? Yes or no, okay. Does the tool instrument um, follow the full principles of assessment? Um, okay, yes, no, and yes, okay. So coming down. Now, in here, what you wanna do is, here's one I prepared earlier, okay. What you wanna do um, is you want to read through the observation and the verbal Q&A, and I want you to find at least three things that you would improve. So for example, question three needs to, um, need to change the wording to be, okay? Um, question six, need to change question to be more specific and put in what the question should be, okay? Um, maybe the question was too vague and maybe it didn't include enough context. So for example, maybe the question was, um, tell me about your job responsibilities, okay? That's not a great question. So instead we could say, tell me about your job responsibilities um, as a barista at Coffee Holics. Okay, that's a much better question, right? So we wanna look back at our observation checklist and our uh, verbal Q&A, and we wanna find at least three things from both that we could make better um, and potentially rewrite, okay? So, and then we write those in there, okay? So, that is the first unit and the first scenario. So, then what we need to do, so we go through and read this. I've trialed the draft assessments, cool. I've completed the assessment analysis, okay, so we tick that box. I've included the completed STA assessment observation checklist, cool. All right, I have attached my modified or typed um, assessments with changes highlighted. Now, as part of your enrollment um, uh, in the course, you will also receive some templates, okay? So let me just um, share with you. Let me just share with you. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen. Now, let me just share with you the template that you will also receive. So, um, as part of your enrollment, you will also receive an email or you'll receive it directly from the trainer with um, separate templates that you'll be creating. So, a marking guide for this unit, okay, and which is basically exactly the same as what you've just filled out, okay. So, what you will do is you will type up what you have done. So you'll type up um, this information, uh, so let's go back, you'll type up all the information into here, okay, and you'll put that information in, you'll put in the observation checklist item, you put in the mapping, okay, and then you'll scroll down and you'll put in the written assessment, 
and you put in the benchmark answers because this is the um, marker's guide, okay? They put in the mapping, you put in the question, you put in the answer, okay? And you'll go through and do that for the marker's guide, okay? And then what you are going to do is All right, let me just show you the next thing. Okay. Um, so, okay, so now this is the other templates that you will receive, okay? So you will receive two templates. You'll receive a marker's guide template and a student assessment workbook template, okay? So you're gonna create a final copy of the assessment, okay? And as before, you're gonna type in the information, okay? But the key thing to remember though, is on these final copies, when you're typing into these templates, you are going to put in the changes that you are going to make. So back here, um, let me just, okay. So back here, up here, we had some changes that we're gonna make, okay? So um, you are going to make sure that you, Factor those changes in to, um, to these new assessments that you are making. So for example, if you change question three, make sure that you are writing in the changed version of the observation item, okay? Or the changed version of the um, question three, for example. If you're changing question three, make sure you put in the changed version, the modified version of the question, okay? Um, now, what you need to remember also is that in these templates, the answers that you put in, um, so the benchmark answers in the student, uh, sorry, in the markers guide, let me just bring up the markers guide. So in the markers guide, the answers you will put in, well, let me go back up. No, let me go to it. Okay. You will put the answers in red. All right. So answer will go in um, red. All right. So that'll go in red. And then the changes that you make. So for example, maybe you change the uh, question three. Okay. That new question will be in green. Okay, because what we need to see is the changes that you have made from the draft to the new modified assessments. Okay, so changes are in green, the answers are in red in the markers guide. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so coming down. Okay, so I've attached to include the benchmark answers. Okay, now. I have undertaken an assessment and provided written feedback on a colleague, okay? And now what you need to do is you need to use those final copies um, with five different people, okay? So you need to use them with five different people and um, that way you will meet the requirements for the unit of competency, okay? Now, obviously those people don't need to take um, the assessments too seriously, but we need to, use, um, to have used them with five different individuals, okay? Now, um, scrolling down, this is a section that's filled out by your um, assessor at Success Training Academy, okay? So scrolling down, that's just filled out by your assessor. Um, assessor name is, um, um, Success Training Academy assessor, they're going to sign it, they're going to put the date. Candidate name is your name and sign and put the date. Okay, your name, sign and put the date. Okay, now, now we've got a different unit. We've got the second unit, which is provide customer information and assistance. Okay, so we're going to go through and we're going to make our assessment plan again. Now, um, I'm not going to go through every box again because the boxes are exactly the same. But this one, um, just need to keep in mind that um, we're going to add in a different type of assessment, okay? So 
Um, all this information you will be able to gather from the scenario itself. So purpose and aims of assessment, reread scenario two up the top here, okay? Um, okay, now this um, scenario two is about Christian Grey, as we talked about. Just coming up to the top. Okay. All right, so scenario two is about Christian Grey and this information here, okay? So have a read through that again. Okay, so scrolling down. Basically what we're gonna do is the entire process all over again, okay? And, okay, so we're gonna make the assessment plan. Okay, if you're not sure what to do with this, just go back and uh, re-listen to the um, first section that we did on this, okay? Target group to be assessed, Christian Grey, put in details about Christian Grey, okay? Um, you'll need to come up with this information. It'll probably be very, very, very similar to what you did last time. Same, okay, same. Reasonable adjustment. In this case, Christian Grey has no reasonable adjustment required, so you could leave this and say none required. Okay. Now in here, assessment method is um, we've got observation and then we've got a written test. Okay. Um, so we've got observation, observation checklist, and evidence rationale. You could put best way to observe candidate providing accurate information to customers. Okay, in here assessment methods, written test, uh, written, uh, written test sheet, uh, benchmark answers for, um, for the assessor, evidence rationale, you could say best way to test um, knowledge. Okay, then in the next one, we're gonna put, um, let's see, third party report. Okay, assessment instruments, third party report, and then you could put signed third party report. Okay, materials required, same, just as you would expect, and pretty much same to what we wrote last time. Okay, so if you're not sure, just check what you wrote last time. Okay, assess the name is your first name and last name. Admin process, pretty much what we've got from last time. Okay, but know that in this time we've got a written test and a third party report. So obviously, your wording is going to change a little bit here. Okay, plan review and approval are right, exactly as what you wrote last time. Storage retrieval, same as last time. Version control, 1.1. Okay, um, manager approval, get someone in your class to sign it or someone you know to sign it. Okay, I'm gonna go through and this time we are going to put an X against observation, written assessment or third party report. So how would you know which to use? Well, basically, observation is something that we can watch someone do. Written assessment is um, a knowledge item, so to speak. Third party report we would use when we want someone else to verify that the person can do the thing or has the skills and knowledge to, um, in order to perform the task, okay? So you're gonna go through and as we did last time, put an X against each of the items or the ways that you are going to assess it, okay? You're gonna go through and do that. Okay, and now knowledge evidence, all right? This time it hasn't been labeled for you, okay? So you need to go ahead and do um, the labeling yourself. So KE1, KE2, okay, and KE3, and KE4, KE5, KE6, um, KE7, KE8, KE9, all of that, okay? Um, and all right, I'll do it for you though. So K4, K5, K6, K7, K8, K9, K10, K11, um, all the way through. Performance evidence, we've got PE1, PE2, PE3, PE4, assessment conditions, AC1, AC2, AC3, AC4. Okay, hopefully you get the picture by now. Each of the bullet points, we're just gonna number, okay? And you're gonna go through and decide how you're going to assess each item. So observation, written test, or third party, okay, and put an X next to each of the items. Then you're gonna come down and you're gonna fill out the assessment plan, okay, and it's gonna be very similar to what you wrote for the first unit, okay, 
And then here we've got um, the observation checklist, okay? And you're going to put in the mapping of the item that you're observing, or make the statement, okay? Um, put in the benchmark performance, put in the mapping, create your statement, put in the benchmark performance, put in the mapping, put in the statement, put in the benchmark performance, okay? And you're going to need to make sure that you cover all of the items that you have decided to assess as observation. You go ahead and you make your written assessment, okay? So you put in the mapping, put in the written assessment question, and put in the answer, okay? So this is very similar to verbal Q&A, um, and uh, it's just in a written format, okay? So, okay, you're gonna come down and Third party report, very similar in nature. However, the wording that we can use is, as a supervisor, I have seen the candidate do X, Y, Z. Okay, so as a candidate, I have seen, sorry, as a supervisor, I've seen the candidate provide accurate information to um, three customers or whatever it might be. Okay, so the key wording here is, as a supervisor, I have seen, and then you can put in what you want the supervisor to have seen. Okay, so the mapping, and then we just make our statement. Okay, and we're gonna go through and do that. Okay, then um, we're going to trial it. Okay, and we're going to get the um, trial candidates feedback on it. Okay, we're gonna find, we're gonna find three things that we would improve on it. Okay, then we would go to those templates and we would type up a student copy and a marker's guide, okay, um, for this unit, okay. Then we're gonna go through the process again and we're gonna use those assessments with five different people, okay. Uh, and then we're gonna come down, um, this section's filled out by your uh, STA assessor, Okay, and then last of all, we are going to do it one more time, but in this case, it's gonna be an RPL assessment. Okay, what does that mean? Not much different, you're gonna fill this out. And basically, the assessment methods, I think we have got workplace documents, competency questions, and third party report. Okay, so we will put those in here. So workplace documents, um, and uh, what it was it? I've forgotten. Competency questions and third party report. Okay, come down and you're going to go ahead and put an X as to how you're going to assess each item. And then you're going to create the assessments just like we did last time. Okay, now the last thing I will say is that up till now, okay, for the mapping, okay, for the mapping, let me just scroll up, okay, because there's one last thing that we need to do. Okay, so it's just one last thing we need to do, and you can do this as you go through it, um, or at the very end, it doesn't really matter. But what we want to do is make sure that our mapping is complete, okay? So, um, up till now, we've just been putting crosses in the box, okay? But what we want to check is that, all right, so we've got 1.3, and that's covered by number one, okay? So, you come back up here. Uh, actually, yeah, okay. So, let's go with the observation. So, 1.1, one, number one. Okay, so up here, we're gonna put, okay, so 1.1 is covered by number one, okay? And we are going to go ahead and find the items that correlate. So observation 1.2, observation 1.2, Okay, observation 1.2 is covered by item two, okay? And you 
we are going to come down here. Where are we here? I'm getting lost. Uh, okay, so in here, we're going to take out the cross and put the number two, okay? Um, so 1.3, okay. So what item, so what question number covers 1.3? Let's check it out. Okay. Um, let's just imagine that this covered, this was 1.3. Okay. Yeah. Having a bit of a meltdown here. Okay. So 1.3. Okay. So 1.3 is covered by number three. Okay. So we're just going to go back up here. Hopefully you're catching the process that I'm going through here because we don't want to leave X's there. We actually want to make sure that we put in the number that relates. So that's going to be number three. Okay. So it's just a way to double check that you have absolutely, absolutely covered everything. Okay. So um, this is called a bit of a validation process, but going back and just double checking what question number um, covers which, each, which item. Okay, so just to recap, okay, so what we've done up till now, we have created an assessment plan for one unit. We have mapped it. We have then written up an observation checklist. We have written up a, a verbal interview. We have then um, trialed it with a candidate. We have then typed it up into the templates, a student copy and a marker's guide. And in those templates, we have changed the items that didn't work, okay? And those changes we put in green. And the benchmark answers we put in red, okay? Then we have used those assessments with five different people that we know. It could be anyone at all, okay? Then we moved on to the second unit and we read the scenario, okay? And we made the assessment plan. We made a um, observation, we made a written test, a third party report, and then we trialed them. And then we analyzed down them. And then we found the problems and we, then we went to the templates and we, created a marker's guide and a, a student copy. And the marker's guide, the uh, marker's guide answers were read, and the student copy and the marker's guide, anything that we changed based on our trial, we made it green. And then we used those modified assessments with five different people. And then a third unit, the third unit was RPL. So we made an RPL type um, assessment plan. and based on the scenario, okay? So you can read the scenario, don't forget to do that, okay? And we made the assessment plan, and then we made a, um, a written test and a third party report and all of that. And then we um, basically trialed it, we made our templates, we reviewed it, all right, and then we did a final check on the mapping, okay, and we used it with five people, okay. Hopefully, the entire process has made sense for you, okay. If you get stuck at any point, just simply send us through an email and we'll be more than happy to help you out with it, okay. But once you've done the first unit, the second one will be very similar, the third one very similar. Um, and we wish you all the very best of luck, okay? It is not complicated, just make sure you follow through the process, okay? Thank you so much for watching this webinar, and uh, we will wish you the very best, and uh, wish you the best of luck on your training and assessment journey as you go out into the workplace as well. All right, thanks for watching. This was a webinar by Success Training Academy.